time. I'm trying to think. I mean, you know, uh, I'm trying to think because I mean, anything could be a fetish, but yes, but but absolutely. but but any body part. I've heard people talk about uh, armpits as as as, as uh, a fetish. I've heard people. Uh, so you you've got you've got uh, you, your biceps are. Uh, I'm sure people worship those. Oh, I, I uh, get um, one of the things I get asked to do because I'm pretty cut and fit. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, I'll get asked to do flex shows, mm-hmm. flexing my mm-hmm. muscles and so forth. I'm that, fine. That's a fetish. Yeah. Is yeah. it or I mean, well, because it's not an inanimate object. It's you. Yeah, I, I think you know. There's more of a. Uh, I think fit, I don't want to say fetish is a subset, but whatever turns you, if something turns you on. Yeah. Um, vi- visually, I think because I mm-hmm. think it has such a visual component. I mean, it does have a tactile, like yeah. with I know with pantyhose. I have gentlemen I I um, who I entertain who they love to dress in pantyhose because they like the tactile right. feel of it. So mm-hmm. they don't mind if yeah. I'm not even wearing wearing pantyhose, but they mm-hmm. like the tactile feel. Sure, of it. sure. So, um, it's. Yeah, I can understand what you're saying about it. It's you know technically maybe it's an object, but right. there's definitely this wide array of like certain picadillos, for lack of a better word, that yeah. turn people on, and yeah. it's their thing. Yeah. Whether it's sneezing, oh, yeah. feet, yeah. pantyhose, whatever it may. Now, be. what's the most, besides the sneezing, which I, which is great, and uh, we had uh, Mr. Cyan here uh, about a month ago, so I heard about some other fetishes that were mm-hmm. kind of ooh. But what is the most unusual fetish that you come across besides the sneezing? Um, she was talking about some guy had a fetish for watches. Oh, watches! Interesting. Yeah. Um, well, I guess the one is cannibal. The cannibal fetish. Um, oh, tell me about that. I, I don't know if I pronounce it correctly. It's something like uh, vora, voraphilia, like V O E R A philia. Mm-hmm. I'm probably mispronouncing. Basically, it's the the fantasy, the fetish of eating somebody, not actual cannibalism. Right. right. But it's that thought of going through a role play. Right. Whereby, you know, I had a client who wanted me to do that role play with him, and he, I, I go to his hotel room. Pretended to eat you, know, and, and, and not, 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 not fully. I, yeah. I don't know he wants to eat me, and then yeah. he slowly brings it out, and then I have to oh, kind of I'm beg for him not to eat me. Funny. Oh, I love it. He trusses me up and oils me up with, um, with vegetable oil. And, <laughs> oh, salad dressing. <laughs> and puts accoutrements like celery and calories. Oh, and yeah, of course. Oh, how me. funny. Seasoning, a little Mrs. Dash, a little uh, salt and pepper. Oh, yeah. My thing is, I have to go, oh, please don't eat me. Please. <laughs> I, I don't have much meat on my bones. You want someone bigger than me. Oh, this is so funny. And, oh. that, and he, and, and I hope that guy doesn't beat us. We got plenty of meat on our bones. But it has nothing to do with actual cannabis. No, I understand. It's right. fantasy of oh, it's, it's role playing. And does yeah. he, does he I, I hate to be indelicate, but does he finish? Does he get oh, yes. aroused? At some point during this, is on, on the table with you know oil on me and an apple in my mouth. Right. And, and he, he yeah, jerks you, off and he comes and that's the yeah. end of the role play. Yeah. You're on a plate and... Uh, in that case, it was a big table. He didn't have a plate. But yeah. I, I, I would think in his mind's eye, I probably was on a plate. I'm sure, yeah. Wow. Better, you know, just like a turkey, you know. Yeah, well, wow. That's uh, that's quite a Thanksgiving I mean, turkey. I've I mean, t- got some news, though, going well, on. Well, before, before that, what's of all the films that you got, what was the most unusual fuzz you got? Um, wow. <laughs> what was something that surprised even you? And I know you got a dirty mind. Thanks. Um, uh, <laughs> no, it's a compliment. I know. Um, you're we, on the show. If you're not on, if you don't all, have a dirty mind, you're not on the show. We all have a dirty mind. Yeah. Um, but uh, um, there was, um, I think, I had a, a really famous adult filmmaker named um, uh, 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 James Avalon. You may know who he is, James Avalon. And uh, he's older than me. He shot a million videos. He's gifted. And he did a short film where I think the girls uh, used uh, like jelly and some things like that on their bodies. Right. And it was, you know, it sounds that sounds pretty common. But to see it done really, really well mm. by pro, yeah. you know, a talented artist, yeah. um, uh, it, it, it was it was good. I can imagine. Yeah, it, I was surprised. peanut butter jelly time. <laughs> I think it actually he won the festival twice out of yeah. six or seven years. So, Susie Q Williams won one. Right, right. You won with Josie. With Josie. I was year. I was in her, yeah, her video. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and I. We stopped the festival, just to be really honest, is that we could never broke even. 
We never went. Well, that was one of my questions: is how, how do you make money on this? You don't. I know. Yeah, I know. You had the club nights, and uh, you probably made some money on that. But I like you know Parrish, right? Yeah, yeah. We're real good friends, and he bust his buns to break even for years. Yeah, and he's had a lot of events that didn't turn the corner, and he and I are good friends, and we've talked a lot about yeah. it and combining forces, but we could never really find. Like finding the right venue, right. then finding the parking, then this and that. Yeah. And it just is like, we we had, I'm not going to complain about the stock room, because I love the stock room. Right. But their old location, they moved about a year and a half ago. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. It, it had no parking. None. Mm-hmm. None, none space, at all. No parking. Yeah. And they had a secret 25 spaces in the back. And they let us park there, but there were like at least another 200 cars that had to be dealt with. And I know people that pulled up and left. You know, no parking. Yeah. 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 And it's, yeah. It's, it's a big issue. I'm not here to complain, though. I got some news, though. Well, oh, you know what? We might as well hear this news. Drum roll, please. One of the most fun things to come out of the festival, because the festival itself was just incredibly stressful. Yeah. Really bad. But on, yeah. on the other side where I was, it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, pardon me, um, I invented the nylon girls. Right. And uh, that comes straight out of a fetish. And I, I might have some pictures. And they wore tights and hose and suspenders and black bras and bowlers, high heels. They almost looked like the female droogs out of Clockwork Orange. A little bit. And that was part of the inspiration. And there's another inspiration, but I don't know. You know, I I worked with the group called The Tubes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I worked with them maybe 30 years ago. Okay. Yeah. They were huge in the Bay Area. Sure. Where they started, I think. Yeah. And their female dancers wore pantyhose with suspenders. Yeah. And a deck of cards, like a five-hand poker, right over their pubic hair. That's crazy. Yeah, and that's where... Right. Actually, I That's made, before they became mainstream. Yeah, I made the movie American Fetish. Right. And that is in that movie. It's a mainstream movie. And right. That lost money, too. <laughs> yeah. But um, um, I have news, though. I shot off and on for years, since 2011. I brought in the top DPs I know, photographers, videographers, and right, stuff. Right. And we were shooting in HD right away mm-hmm. on great cameras, and it's about the lenses sometimes in the sure. in the video. And um, I just finished editing a two-hour documentary wow. about the first auditions that were done at Dungeon Court. Right. Yeah. Uh, John's place that is no yeah, yeah, longer yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just talked to him this morning about another piece of news I have, but uh, I'm uh, I'm going to probably self distribute it. I talked to I know a lot of distributors and the most successful guys really do the little extreme genres like extreme horror. Right. Like I'm very good friends with Steve Byro who runs Unearth Films. Sure. And he's actually on a huge roll right now. Right. And buying up other companies. And he and I have been planning. He wants me to direct a gore porn. <laughs> and I don't even wow. I don't even know what that is, you know. Oh, you got an idea. I, yeah, I got an idea. But he's gonna help me maybe distribute the Nylon Girls. We're gonna go to D V D and believe it or not, D V D still sell in these little genres. Oh, yeah. I don't. I don't. I have a few DVDs out. On yeah. RubyDVD.com. Um, yeah. And they still. They sell. They sell. Yeah. Yeah. No, I got a stack of naughty DVDs from ten years ago. Right. Well, I, I, I never want to sell them though. You know what I'm saying? Sure. But um, the Nylon Girls, it's not X-rated. There is no nudity. Right. It's about as tease as humanly possible. I did this specifically because we ran the festival like this. Because mm-hmm. if you know and I know, once you involve explicit sex in a venue or something, you're under a whole other set of laws. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And the LAPD doesn't mess around. Oh, yeah. Like, you can't go to uh, a bar sinister, Bordner's. Sure. And I know everybody there really well. And um, uh, they we got to be super careful about showing sexually explicit movies because you can't 
I believe in LA, you cannot serve alcohol in a venue where you see something X rated. Yeah, I like, think that's right. Like when I was driving here, I passed by the Seventh Vale. Right. And I was like, well, if I'm going to be really late, I might as well just stop here. Yeah, <laughs> well, geez, I'm but, sure you've been there um, before. It's fully nude dancing. And I've been in the nude dance place probably twice in 10 years. You yeah. Know? And um, I support the sex workers big time. I think totally should be legalized and run and figured out. Well, yeah. Well, my friend, like, my, my friend visited me in Los Angeles and she's like, wow, it's kind of cool. You got this. Uh, clown theme lounge down the street from your house i'm like it's not and i tried to tell her what jumbo's clown room was and right uh, <laughs> i you, love jumbos yeah i I, I, I went there once with a clown but i'm not a big strip club cat yeah. dances there and katie dances yeah there. well then i'm sure you know katie walters yeah the contortionist yes did you know she just got a huge broadway play financed that's great you gotta have her on the show i'm going I to love this person she is Gifted, and, you know, right. she's really good friend, friends with Cat to Cure. They'd probably be a great couple to have. I, 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 I think they would be. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 but the Nylon Girls is going to be a two-hour documentary. It's in HD that looks like it just jumps out of the screen. It's photographed beautifully, mm -hmm. interviews. And then I have part two, then part three, and part four. And I'm actually go. looking, I'm going to push myself here. I'm looking for financing to finish editing. It's not a lot of money involved, but it's independent. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. Kickstarter or anything? You know, I probably should do that. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, right. and yeah. you go, go with Kickstarter. I don't need a lot of money. Right. I mean, I just have to basic. I'm editing it. I yeah. want to hire another editor, but it's going to take months. I'll, I'll go through Christmas on this. Well, I mean, let me let me tell you something. My, I, you know, one of the people that I was actually uh, shocked came on, uh, called in and was uh, uh, one of my favorite directors, Hal Hartley. Uh, he, uh, who directed Henry Fool and uh, Trust and other great movies, mm -hmm. he he called up. He called in to the show because he did an indie, he did a Kickstarter campaign for one of his movies. So everybody's doing it. He did a kick, he, he did a Kickstarter campaign for the uh, Dead Rifle, the last Henry Fool movie. Mm -hmm. Got it made, made made a, made a nice profit off it. But, Steve Steve Byro, who runs on Earth Films, uh, got the rights to do uh, Guinea Pig. It was originally a Japanese torture movie right it was one charlie sheen called the fbi and said oh yeah they're really killing somebody right right, right 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 it was just a yeah but i looked at it and said sorry charlie <laughs> you know there you go this this is not real no wait a second did you hang out with charlie sheen no i oh. never had, but yeah he dated a woman i knew really well but these were the the two women and the cocaine fueled madness and remember he yeah. kind of lost his mind well i thought you meant you're a cocaine fueled madness no. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. I stopped doing drugs a long time. Yeah, I know you. I, I know you. Do. I know be you. Be here if I know you. Unless do. we had some great coke. Yeah. No, but, yeah. No. 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 Now, no, Casey, let me ask you. Now, how many guys come to you have a nylon fetish? Is that a big thing? It's definitely a thing. Um, I don't know percentage wise or number, but I I get it often. I definitely, and it's interesting because. With Michael, when you mentioned pantyhose, it, you know, because you just said to me, hey, you might like you to wear some pantyhose. And I immediately go to, okay, is that nylons or is that pantyhose? Because there is a difference. I'm wearing thigh-high <laughs> stockings today, yeah. which is different than a pantyhose fetish technically. <clears throat> right. The legs types can be the legs type, suntan, you know, yeah. all the way up to sure. troll top. Yeah. Which, 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 like. which you, don't, you don't see a lot anymore. I mean, I, I see, I, I look at old movies from the 60s and 70s. Everybody's wearing that now. Nobody wears it, and I like it. I oh. I'm a legs guy. I like legs as much as anybody. You I'm not would into be pantyhose. Surprised how many women still wear them though. And here's the weird thing though. Yeah. This is what's really kind of funny. Had my share of girlfriends. Never been married. Got real close a few times. And yeah, now um, he's bragging. Well, yeah. never got married though. Never had any kids. Yeah. I'd love to have a kid. But uh, really. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I th yeah. I love kids. I love babies. It's my yeah. favorite thing on Facebook is when people have babies. They're so cute. I yeah. don't know what it is. Yeah. But um, but when they get about six or seven, you don't want them anyway. <laughs> but uh, I would ask my girlfriends to wear hose, and they were all confused. They did not understand it. Tights, pantyhose, and yet, like if I would 
spend the night with them and wake up in the morning. I'm an independent producer, so I don't have to be at work at eight. Right. They would have to, the dental hygienist would have to be at work at eight. Yeah. And she would do what I call a reverse strip tease, where she would get out of the shower or whatever, and then get dressed and walk around in her underwear. And I was saying, you know, thank you, God, you know, or whatever. You like watching girls get dressed. Oh, it's a blast. It's almost more fun than watching them get undressed. When I, I shot a few movies for Adam and Eve, as we all know. Right. And um, got in the Avian Hall of Fame and promptly couldn't find any more work. <laughs> Is that true? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, happened last year. 